So as the cars go around this warm-up lap, ready for the start of the second race here at Oschersleben. Round 10 of the Seat Leon Euro Cup. They are led by Tim Coronel. Top eight from race one in reverse order for race two from ninth on down. Where you finish is where you start. And that means that the blue car, middle of your frame at the moment, championship leader Norbert Michaelis, our first race winner, starts in eighth place. With Dego Puyo not here, Massimiliano, Massimiliano Pedala not scoring in race one. Freddie Bart, uh, Claire Lorini, the only ones really who closed at all in the championship points on Michaelis. And that's not looking like too much of a threat. They came in here with a four-point lead over Puyo, and he's now got a 14-point lead over his closest rival, 16 over Pedala who uh, didn't score in race one either. So with 30 points remaining in the season, including 10 for this race win, Norman Michaelis really only needs to pick up a few points in the midfield of the top eight to secure himself the 2009 Seat Leon Euro Cup. Tim Coronel and Oleg Pechikov, the front row of this race two grid. Round 10 of the championship will be headed off by the Dutchman, and uh, this will be a great time to win with a huge crowd having already uh, of Dutch uh, fans having already enjoyed big party in their uh, awning uh, on Saturday night. Javier Ebran lines up third ahead of Jean-Marie Claire, Freddy Bart and Peter Fulin, Andrea Larini and Norbert Michaelis, and down towards the back, Mikhail Rossi, Savicki near Gray, Pedala. And the rest, and right at the back, Navarro, again, another 10-place grid penalty for him. Sees him start right at the very back of the field. So, dark blue car on the left as they get away is Tim Coronel. Oleg Petrikov starts well, so does Jean-Marie Claire. The orange car comes around Petrikov. He does not get away in second gear. And also, Javier Ibran is looking for a place there. Freddie Bart goes very wide and sweeps in across the nose of Ebran. He's got the apex of the second corner. He's straight into Tim Coronel and right up in the air went the number 16 car of Oleg Petrikov. He came back down, wipers on, but wheels on critically. Freddie Bart leads. Freddie Bart leads, and it is our third place finish in race one. Peter Fulin, who is second. Fifth place for Tim Coronel. Somehow he's managed to keep it going. Ron Campos gets knocked sideways and out of the way. Oh, surprise by a Lurini. And spinning around there also is Javier Ibran, who started in third and has been punted off the back of the field. Well, Lurini in car number four in fourth place. Right behind him is Tim Coronel, and Coronel will not take kindly to being thumped out of the race so far by two different drivers. Not exactly a uh, great start to the race for him. Having a little look at Lorini on the inside, down into the S's. Is he going to be close enough? He is not. Bart leads. Fulin Dudicarlo is up to third, ahead of Lorini and Coronel in all of that confusion. There's Balint Hadrani, our longtime race one leader, towards the tail of the field. So they all sweep through the final corner and on to the start-finish straight for the first time. Bart leads. Fulin looking for another podium. Duda Carlo, maybe his first this season, I think, Duda Carlo. Lorini in fourth place. Coronel in fifth. Mikel Rossi in sixth. Ron Campus in seventh in the orange and white car. Behind him, Matioski, near great Barkovic. And outside the top ten, never mind the top eight, is Norbert Michaelis behind Freddie Bart. So that makes Michaelis 12th at the moment. Lorini bobbling around. All drifts offline a little in Hasselroda, the long corner three. Gets a little push through on the exit. Here comes... Oh! And trouble behind near gray spinning around now who's made contact with him there was someone off on the outside not sure who larini holds on tim coronel was having a look into turn four it didn't happen through the back out through the chicane they all race out of four up to the chicane freddie bart steaming away in the lead Peter Fulin in second place. 
Dudicolo in third, then Larini, Coronel and Rossi. Here further back, Barkovics in the lime green and white machine under pressure from Freddy Barton, Norbert Michaelis. Well, it was a slow start from Oleg Petrikov that dropped him out of the first corner incident. Well, there was a bit of bunching further back, but it was Freddy Bart. Watch the car on the extreme left of the track. He sweeps in on the racing line. Coronel, the pole man, has an overlap, but into the second part of the corner. Now watch happens with Bart. Goes for the apex, even though Coronel's car is plainly there. Javier Ibran gets underneath Oleg Petrikov somehow. Norbert Michaelis squeezes by Freddy Bart. They've both gone by Barkovic. There's Navarro having a look. Bart leads. And whoa, Navarro gets eased way off there. There's Ron Campos. Oh, dear. Well, I didn't see who uh, touched Javier Ibran from behind there. This was early on in the race. Uh, it was Barkovic that spun near Gray. That was out of corner three. Navarro and uh, Clare, wheel to wheel. Navarro being a bit ambitious, perhaps trying to hang on around the outside there. And yellow flags are in front as well. Here's our race leader, Freddie Bart, then. Struggled to come up the order in the beginning of the first race. He started right at the back of the grid, and perversely, that helped him. He ended up in fourth place. Now he's leading race two, so what could have been a disaster for Freddie Bart is looking quite strong at the moment. And this battle behind is really helping. Duda Carlo in third place with the cure cars behind him. Oh, Freddie, stay off the curbs. Big slide, gets it under control, but it's not helping the tyres. Coronel defending now. Duda Carlo under pressure from Larini. Larini goes through for third, or does he? Not quite. And Tim Coronel just holds on in fifth, but only just in front of Mikel Rossi. Bart still pulling away comfortably. Lap four of 14, so lots more racing to come. Fulin in second, Duda Carlo, yellow roof is Larini. Further back, Campus and Matiowski for seventh. Matiowski goes through, means Ron Campus has now got Norbert Michaelis behind him. Coronel still trying to hold off Mikel Rossi. Well, Rossi pushing hard at the back of this train, and it's... Alexei Dudacalo in front that is holding everybody up a little. The Rangoni Motorsport car. Valint Hatvani dives inside Jean-Marie Claire there. Freddy Bart now with half the back straight between himself and second placed Peter Fullin. Larini sweeping offline and then tucks back in behind Dudacalo. Dudacalo, Larini the yellow roof, blue car Coronel, Rossi behind. Whoa, and Michaelis has got by Ron Campus. Massimiliano Padala knocking on the back door as well. Campus is now down to ninth place in that sad Holland entry with the uh, teethy grill. Freddy Bart, as these guys come through the final corner, way across the line, five and a half seconds ahead of Fulin, then Duda Carlo and... Coronel on the outside of Larini. It's a dangerous place to be. Larini gives him a little tap down the straight. Larini jumps the curbs badly. Coronel's got on the inside and through he goes. It may not be over yet, though. Larini very close behind. Oh, and Larini gets a tap from behind as well from Mikel Rossi. Rossi's opened him up on the inside of corner three. He goes through at Hasselroda. Larini punts him back. Tries to turn even tighter, but Rossi has got the place. Well, live by the bumper, die by the bumper, perhaps, you might argue. Larini giving a bump here, absolutely needlessly making contact on the straight. Jumps the curbs here, and that's his undoing, because Coronel turns in tighter, and as he got through, so too in the next corner did Mikel Rossi. Oh, Larini's fast, though, through the chicane behind that group. Bart, quicker than anyone else, still flying away out front. And now they have caught Peter Fulin. No, Fulin is gone. 
So this is the battle for second, Ducolo versus Coronel. What's happened to Peter Fulin? He must have pulled off somewhere. He's not in any of these groups of cars coming through. Surely I didn't just miss seeing him, did I? There he is, he's further back. So he's had a problem somewhere. It looks like he's spun, maybe. Bart leads, Ducolo. Coronel, Rossi and Larini. That is the next group. This is for second then. Coronel has second at the line. He has got in front of Duda Carlo. Rossi down the inside of the Russian driver. Coronel second. Rossi third. Duda Carlo fourth. Larini in fifth place. So Tim Coronel, our pole sitter, up to second now, but surely Freddie Bart. Well, there's still half the race, but they're going to have to find pace they've never found. Rossi flashing the headlights. Now, is that a get-out-of-the-way flash or a come-on, let's get going and leave these guys behind flash? Have to wait and see. I'm sure that Tim Coronel will want to get on with the job in hand as well, which is catching Freddie Bart but he will know when he gets around next time that he's got a near nine second margin to make up. Kale Rossi in the Sun Red team for the first time here, sharing uh, one of the big garages with, uh, or the awnings with Tim Coronel. I wonder if they've had a discussion about working together rather than against each other. Coronel safely away from Rossi. Coronel second, there's Rossi in third. Oh, and dust in, they're coming up to a big cloud of dust. What's happened there? Nothing it would seem. Somebody's kicked up dust and carried on. So, Freddie Bart it was who kicked up the dust, but uh, no drama, his car continues. Maybe some drama, but no uh, chaos anyway. 9.2 seconds, goodness me. Bart has really opened up from 8.5 to 9.2. Rossi and Coronel must not fight each other. And especially now, Larini's got by Duda Carlo. Michaelis is coming as well, as is Matiowski. So too is Massimiliano Pedala. So second and third, Coronel and Rossi, really imperative that they stop fighting now and just drive their hearts out, Bart to the inside. Masiowski drifted offline going into corner three. Padala rather, not Bart, went straight by him. Freddy Bart leads comfortably here in Oschersleben. Round 10 of the Saat Leon Euro Cup 2009. And he's got the better part of a 10 second lead. Surely they can't catch him now. Battle for second continues. Tim Coronel, Mikel Rossi right behind him. They are desperately trying to catch Freddie Bart, the runaway race leader here. Well, at least Coronel is. Quite sure whether Mikel Rossi is following with him or trying to attack him. Through the back chicane, sweeping around corner six. Really critical, this corner. Drift out too wide, lose traction, and make you slower than your rival down the straight. Well, they're still staying away. In fact, they're pulling away quite noticeably from Andrea Larini. There is Larini in fourth place. Michal Matiowski on the back of the group. Championship leader in the blue car in the middle. He's in sixth position. Norbert Michaelis, after winning in race one and then getting shuffled right down the order, he's recovered very well. Freddie Bart leads, though. Let's take a look at the margin this time round. 9.7. They're not making much of an inroad into him. Coronel second. Rossi third. Larini fourth. Then Massimiliano Padala in car number eight. Michaelis. Then this battle, Dudekolo and Maciowski. Bart still consistently among the fastest laps that anybody is running on the track. And that's absolutely imperative for him. Just past mid-distance. 9 of 14. And Mikel Rossi sticking to the task right with Tim Coronel. And look how hard they are pushing the cars. 
drifting them through the corners. It's often a sign of how hard a front wheel drive car is being pushed. If you get the nose in tight, doesn't matter where the tail goes, you can really push it hard. If the back wheels drift around a little, it doesn't necessarily have too much of a detriment on your speed. Down the back straight to the Shell S's. We'll see a little offline. Not close enough to even think about trying anything there, though. Rob Campus and Jean-Marie Claret on the right. Car number one diving to the inside of the Dutchman. And Bart into the pit lane. Drive through penalty for Freddie Bart. Now, is that for his first corner move where he punted off Tim Coronel? If it is, then it will be a reasonable retribution because Coronel will retake the lead as a result. Game on, Tim Coronel and Mikel Rossi. It's now for the lead and not for second place. Well, Bart led because he crossed the timing beam in the pit lane before they got to it, but... Freddie Bart rejoining a long way down the order. Tim Coronel, the pole man, might yet hear the whistles there from the fans, the Dutch fans in the grandstand, <laughs> might yet win this race, but then so too might Mikel Rossi. Well, that will be very entertaining indeed for Rossi. Rossi did not race in Porto or in Brands Hatch. So it's been a long time. June, the middle of June was the last time he raced. So two months out of the car nearly. And Andrea Larini behind. Now he's under real pressure. And this could be quite entertaining for the championship. Larini and Massimiliano Padala. Padala, of course, looking to take second place in the points. Padala all over Larini. But the bad news for Padala is that Norbert Michaelis, the blue car right behind, the championship leader, Padala needs to get by Larini and ideally make sure that Larini holds off Michaelis. I'm not quite sure how he'd do that, though. Across the line comes Coronel, Rossi right with him. And Padala, Michaelis, Larini all together. Larini still just in third place. Rossi still just the leader, and Larini still just in third place. But here comes Michaelis trying to come around the outside of Padala. And it won't be lost on Padala how important it is to try and hold him off. If Michaelis finishes in front of him yet again in this race, it's not going to help the championship at all. Due to Carlo and Matiowski behind. Goodness me, suddenly a very busy race. Marini hanging on to a podium. Padala could use those extra points, or that extra point between where he is in fourth and third place where Larini is. Championships have been won by less. Down the back straight come the leaders. Three of a second at the line. Very close indeed. Far too close to call. Rossi gets one good exit down this back straight. He could be through. Ditto for Norbert Michaelis. And Massimiliano, Massimiliano Padala. Only too aware of that. That might be a bit of a mistake there from uh, Padala. Drifts out wide through the S's. And Michaelis is all over him into the final corner. Michaelis could be well placed for a lunge here for fourth place. On to lap 12, so three to go now, including this one. On to lap 13, rather, so two to go, including this one. Coronel leads by a, a hair's breadth from Rossi. Larini just ahead of Padala and Michaelis. In the end, Michaelis perhaps doesn't need to pass Padala, such as his lead. 16 points still over the Italian. And he knows that that will be reduced only to 15 points if they finish as they are. And there will be just 20 points on offer in the remaining two races. Goodness me, could be a tight run to the line if there's a disaster for Norbert Michaelis in Monza. Okay, 
this again just fighting the car it's a little wayward getting very sideways on him he is still looking for a way past massimiliano pedala every corner here come our leaders then penultimate lap of the race tim coronel still just that car length in front of michael rossi Rini in third, again, not much more than the car length between this trio, between any of the cars. Oh, and Larini drifts out wide. Oh, really flies. Padala to the inside, a little bit of a rub. Oh, here's a chance for Michaelis, they'll both be slow. The blue car, watch him because he might well take third place here. Coronel and Rossi very close together. Coronel defends into the chicane for the final time, into corner one. But right behind, Larini and Padala falling over each other may well have gifted the place to Michaelis. No, he does not have the speed to get by them. Larini somehow clings to third. Padala just wide out of corner one. Michaelis goes through. It's not finished yet. Yes, it is. Padala drifts out onto the dirt. And that's that done. Michaelis will add another point to his advantage over Padala, who will be his closest rival as they go to Monza. Larini, third position. And Larini may suddenly become a bit more of a player after Freddie Bart punted. Tim Coronel out of the lead in the first corner and was summoned into the pit lane to pay the price. Oh, Padala very sideways indeed. Tim Coronel hanging on from Mikel Rossi. Critical exit here. Oh, he's all over the grass and the dirt. He's going to lose momentum. Rossi will be closer and closer and closer down the straight. Here's a chance for a pass into the S's. He's not going to be close enough, surely, no. Coronel keeps his nose in front, but look at this. Drift out very wide. How he kept the momentum, Lord only knows. Last two corners then, onto the brakes for the final time. Mikel Rossi drifts out around the outside. He's trying to have a run for the line. This is going to be another close run thing. And he's going to try it very hard. But at the line, it is just, just, just Tim Coronel. Larini ahead of Michaelis, third and fourth. But Coronel by a hair's breadth from Mikhail Rossi. Look at this. What a tiny margin. Goodness me. Mikhail Rossi's splitter was at the front of Tim Coronel's wheel as they got to the line. Another couple of hundred meters and Rossi would have won it. Wow, what a finish for Tim Coronel. He wins the second race of the weekend and that is a first win of the season for tim coronel fantastic stuff from michael rossi winner earlier on in the year in bruno and nearly made it too he nearly became the second man to win more than one race but in fact we have our seventh winner of the season tim coronel Four wins, though, for Norbert Michaelis out of the ten races so far. Surely he will end up taking the championship in Imola. It would be fitting if he did, and really a bit of a travesty if anyone else was to snatch it through misfortune for Michaelis, because he has been a class act. Only failed to score in two races. And he failed to score so far in, uh, yes, in two races. Didn't score in Valencia, didn't score in Bruno in race two in Valencia, race one in Bruno. Freddie Bart outside the points, zero for him in that race. Well, drama for the first corner to the last. Coronel shoved off and somehow fought his way back to win. What a gripping race.
So Tim Cornell comes in as a race winner for the first time. Two lots of applause from lots of Dutch fans down there. Look at that, he's already got the helmet off. He is thrilled to bits with that. And uh, brother Tom, double race winner in the independence category in the World Touring Car Championship. Mikael Rossi, a very close second place. Nicola Larini third. Look at that, 12 thousandths of a second. Close enough for third as well, wasn't it? Mikael is only just behind. May well have done enough this weekend, despite all the incidents, to uh, effectively seal the championship. Freddie Bart in ninth. Very disappointing for him. But he was the architect of his own downfall. He tried to avoid trouble in race w in the uh, first corner in race two, and in the end, it was he that caused it. Well, Coronel chatting for the Dutch television in the uh, right-hand corner there. Mikael Rossi taking second ahead of Andrea Larini. And Larini, 27 points, can't win it, nor can Bart Diego Puyo. Were he to race in Monza, could. But essentially, it's between Italy's Massimiliano Padala and Hungary's Norbert Michaelis. And with four wins already, surely the odds are on Michaelis putting together a winning package in Monza in a fortnight's time. There's only one way to find out. Watch it all unfold on Eurosport.